Hello everyone, this is Gail, and I'm back with another polymer clay tutorial. Uh, this one I'm hoping will be simple. I don't know yet. We will see. But I want to make a mermaid's tail pendant. And I'm not sure. I've watched several videos. Uh, none of them really addressed what I wanted as far as a, vi as a video. So I'm going to just wing it. But the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to roll just some, this is Primo Black Clay, and I'm going to roll it, uh, this is on the number one because I just finished conditioning it, but I think I'm going to roll it down to like a number three, or depending on your machine, the third thickest setting. And I don't need a big piece, but this is going to be the backing. And I don't want it to be a very long tail. I don't want, well, you know, some of them I saw were really long and I didn't like that. And I want to use some kind of texture. And I saw this, and this sort of looks like water. So what I think I'm going to do, because I'm going to be using Perfect Pearls, to color my mermaid tail, I thought I would use Perfect Pearls as a resist on my um, on my texture sheet. Now I'm thinking blues and greens. There's a couple of blues. Here's a green. This is a different kind of green. Here's a darker blue. I don't know what colors I'm going to use yet. Here's a lighter blue. And I might even throw some colors in that I haven't pulled out. But this is just going to be for the back. But rather than spraying it with water or using cornstarch, I'm going to use the Perfect Pearls, and it does the same thing. So let me just start with brushing on. Has this one been open? This one hadn't been opened. And this one is turquoise. It's a little light for a turquoise, but that's okay. And I'm just going to cover an area with the turquoise. And in no particular order. But this turquoise is going to keep my clay from sticking to this background. Sometimes with these little jars, you can't tell when you've got them, the top back on there. I felt that. All right, so then let's use um, not sure what color this is, but that looks like a green. Let me try this blue. This is sort of a sea green. I'm not sure what the color is, but let me just you just want to make sure that where you're going to put your background is going to be covered in your pa powders so that it, it doesn't stick. And who knows what this is going to look like when I pull the clay off of it. Alright, so I've used these two blues. Let me do one more bright blue, and I won't use as much of this, just to kind of fill in some spaces. There. And I'm going to add some greens. I'm just having fun. It's one of the things I like about polymer clay is you can just have fun. And I put a little bit of green in there. And this is a blue or it's a different color. What color is this? It doesn't have the color number on it. I think this is just a light color. Probably don't need any more blues. But let me try this other green. I think this this green is a much different green than the other one. Just to add 
some green, some color, some interest. And like I say, I don't know what this is going to look like, but it's not going to be just a plain back background. So I think this is about the size I want my mermaid tail to be. Actually, I don't even want it this big. So I'm going to lay this down on here, and that's going to end up being my background. Now I'm going to put this aside for a minute. And now I'm going to work on the actual mermaid tail. Now I had this scrap cut, not scrap, but it's what came off the ends. I'm going to attach that and I'm going to cut this end off because that's where air will get, get included and I might, may as well cut this end off too because I don't want a big mermaid tail. And I'll trim it again, but I'm just going to make a, a, a rope, a log of clay. And I'm going to start pressing it down. And actually, that's about as long as I want it. Like I said, I don't want it to be huge. And then I'm going to roll this with a roller to get it flatter. And we'll push up on it so it can go out a little bit. don't even have to be real careful. But I'm thinking, let me get my craft knife. I'm thinking maybe like here. And I'm going to round the sides down. And this isn't going to be perfectly straight because it's a mermaid. She's got little grooves and things in her tail. And once I get kind of a basic shape done, I will put it on the background. So I'm going to lay it on this. I know you can't see very well because it's black on black. But I'm going to be trimming it in a minute anyway. So let me just trim around the outside in kind of the basic shape of this mermaid. I'm going to leave this part at the bottom. Can you see the back, how pretty that is? Isn't that pretty? But I'm going to leave the bottom. Let me just trim this one off even. And since I have more light on this side, I will work on this side. And you don't, at this point, you don't have to be precise because you're going to be pressing and, oh, I just love that. That is so pretty. It looks like a pearl type finish, which, ha, huh, perfect pearls. So now I can start working with my, my tail. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use different things that I have that I can press indentations with. I'm going to start with the medium ball tool. This is a Sculpey 
tool. It comes in three. Comes in a set of three. You got the real big one and the medium one and a little tiny one. I don't not going to be using the tiny one, but I'll probably use these two. But I'm going to start with the medium, and I'm going to start just pressing into the tail to make a little groove. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. Just press, and then you can smooth it out to make a little groove. And then you just kind of do what you want to do. You, you make it, you know, if you can imagine a fish tail, you know, what the fish tails look like. Let me do this. I'll do two of these. Then I'll take my larger ball and take it up to the top and kind of roll it to kind of blend that tail, those little grooves, into the rest of the torso, I guess that is. And you can do as much or as little as you want. Let's see what's on the other end of these tools. That one's got a little pointed end, so maybe I can use this to make some texture on the areas in between those grooves. And just try to get this to look like a tail. And let me get a card. I'm going to put this on a card. Actually, I pulled out a card. What did I do with it? Oh, I lose things so easily. Oh, I put it up here. But since I've pressed this down, it should pick up the powder that's on my Ooh, look at that. That would even be pretty on the front, wouldn't it? Wow. All right, so we're kind of done with this. And now we can start fine-tuning our tail. We want to smooth the edges here. And you want to push down, kind of round them off with your fingers. And you can use you can use all different things. I have metal tools. I have I have all kinds of different tools. Just to kind of, you want it to curve down, but you also want it to be smooth. You don't want any little sc scraggler pieces of clay there. And then I can turn it around so I can see the top and get rid of any little imperfections I see there. And just, like I said, just take this opportunity to smooth it a little bit. Because right now you're not working on the mermaid details as much as just getting your edges nice and smooth. And they don't even have to be straight because I'm sure mermaids are not don't have straight tails. And then we're going to go back here. Actually, I'm just going to use this little blade that's on the end of my tool. And I'm going to start cutting some of this excess clay off here. And go back to a tail shape. 
this is the single layer of clay that I'm cutting. I'm not cutting the clay that's on top. I may end up getting some, but it's just going to be to smooth it out. Just, and then you can go back and refine it. Now see, this goes up higher than that, so I can do two things. I can take my ball tool and push up to have another little ripple sort of like that in the tail. And I might even put a little one right here just so it's not straight across there. Then you can again refine your edges. And you're going to want your thin at the bottom to be a little bit thinner than the rest, but it's easier to get it thin after you've refined your edges. Okay. And like I said, it's not straight, it's not even, but I think I kind of like it that way. And I'm just going to kind of press this end just so it's a little bit thinner. And you'll see by doing all this pressing, I've kind of lost some of the texture in here. So you can take your ball tool and just reinforce where your little grooves were. And they don't have to be deep. They don't have to be big. Just enough so it can grab some, grab some color when you do that. You could even take your needle tool, if you have a needle tool or just a big upholstery needle, and kind of come through and make some grooves. I'll do it this way so that the needle part is at the bottom. Just to add more little detail. Like I said, I've never done this before. So I'm kind of learning right along with you. But I do know what I want it to look like. Now I did come up a little bit too much on that one, but I'll just smooth it out. But I think I'm liking this so far. I think I will round that a little bit to match the other side. Now, we need to make um, her scales, and before I cleaned up my workstation, I had a little piece of straw. I was going to try to think of something that everybody had that they could use to make the scales, and of course I can't find my straw. I'm sure I tucked it somewhere where I could find it. But I can't. So instead of using a straw, I'm going to take one of my little Kemper cutters. Let me find the little one. Here's the little one. I'm going to use this little Kemper cutter. And like I said, this can be a straw. Um, I'm looking over on my other table because I may have put it over there, but I don't see it. But anyway, just like a little drinking straw or whatever, I'm going to just take this and I'm going to just start pressing little semicircles Can you see that? See the little semicircles? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this all the way down and I will fast forward so you don't have to watch all this, but I won't cut it out in case you want to see what I do. Okay. 
There we go. Let me show you up close all the different little circles. I went back over it and where it looked like it was just too big a, a scale, I just went over it a second time to make it a little bit shorter. So now we get to play again. So let me get back to my perfect pearls and my brush. Put some of these things away. I've got too much stuff sitting here on my table. But now I'm going to start using the perfect pearls on my on the tail and what I think I'm going to do is start with the green this time so that it stays more in the background. You can use a brush, you can use your fingers. I think I'm just going to use the brush. And let me come in so you can see a little bit more of what I'm doing. This is like a green patina, so it's going to be kind of light. But I can put this on the bottom just to give it a little bit of a base. Then I'm going to use this other green. It's a little bit darker. And again, I'm not going to put it on here in any particular place or any particular area. I'm just going to put it on. Alright, so it's looking pretty green right now, so let's add some blue. Okay, this is a light blue. This is it's not turquoise because turquoise is the other really light one, but let me put some blue on here. Whoops, a little bit much there, so let me put a lot on that side to kind of match it a little bit. Kind of like to have a little bit more blue than the green. Okay, I might put this real light color here on the ends just to give it the illusion of being thinner so you just play until it looks the way you like it I might put some more of this on it in a minute. Because I really like this deep blue, but you don't want to use a lot of it because it is a deep blue. You just want to use it in places. So I thought maybe like where the tail and the torso come together. And maybe up here at the top. And maybe just a few little streaks down the tail. Go we'll put it on the sides just for some shading. Now, 
I don't know how these colors show up to you. But I think that's beautiful. So I will turn it oh, this card over. I wanted to show you. There's the back. And then there's the front with all the different iridescent colors. Isn't that beautiful? And I didn't put my bail on there. And I should have done that before I did all this. So what I think I'm going to do is go ahead and bake this. And then when it comes out, I may put a little eye hook on each corner and hang it that way on a chain. Okay, I haven't baked this yet because I decided to go ahead and put some little screw eyes in there and I got to looking at this and it still looks a bit dark. So I think I'm going to put a light, maybe a white pearl color on it just to lighten it up a little bit because I just feel like this is a bit dark and I'll probably ruin it Just trying to lighten it up a little bit. It's still keeping the blue and the green color. Especially down here. I want that to be really light. Because that's the thinnest part. Got too much powder on my brush, but I can make it work. There we go. That's not quite so dark now. It's more the color that I wanted. And all I did was added a little bit of pearl color, the white pearl color, to the top. And I'll probably... Where is that turquoise? Add just a little bit of the turquoise to add some more of the blue color back in it. I'm using the turquoise because it's a light color. I think I like that better. Okay, now I'm going to bake it 275 for an hour. And then I'll be back. Okay, everybody, I have taken the my mermaid tail out of the oven, and it's all baked. And even though I use Perfect Pearls, which have now... Because Perfect Pearls has some type of a resin or something in them so that when it's baked, it actually bonds with the, um, with the clay. You know, there's no need to um, to seal it. I'm sorry, I can't seem to get my words out this morning. I haven't talked to anybody today. Uh, but you don't have to seal it. But I'm not real happy with the way that... I sh probably should have used my finger to apply the perfect pearls so that the, these little crevices where the scales are would not show. So I think I'm going to antique them a little bit. And... I think I will use black craft paint. Um, and I'm not going to need a lot of it. Let me, see that's my very thing. Let me find a brush. I've got some little scruffy brushes that I use. Um, 